today in our 2014 Chevrolet Malibu, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Universal Brake Monitor, part number RM-9530. And to help us with our installation, we're going to be also installing the Roadmaster Universal Stoplight Switch Kit, part number RM-751000. So here's what our monitor is going to look like once we have everything hooked up. On the motorhome side, it's just going to be this small box and we're going to have a power cord. It's going to be completely portable, so if we need to move to another motorhome or we're not using it, we can unplug it and put it in a storage compartment somewhere. And what our monitor is going to do is it's going to monitor the braking activity on our towed vehicle. So that way we can easily see it with these lights right here in an audible alert and know exactly what's going on. That way it prevents us from having to look at our rear view camera looking for a small light that's going to be on the dash or the rear view of our towed vehicle. This is going to be a lot easier to see and we're not going to have to strain in those highlight situations in the middle of the day where the light on the dash may not come on that bright. We'll have our lights right here close to us and whenever we press on the brake pedal on our motorhome the yellow light's going to come on underneath brake letting us know that the towed vehicle's brakes are applied. And when we release them, the light will go out, letting us know that the brakes are released on the towed vehicle. The middle light is going to let us know if there's a breakaway. So in the event that our towed vehicle were to disconnect from the motorhome in an emergency situation, we're going to hear an audible alert and have that breakaway light come on, letting us know that immediately that there's a problem. One of the nicest things about our monitor system is that it's going to be universal. It's going to work with any motorhome so long as you have a 12 volt power source. We're going to have a similar style monitor that's going to stay on the car that's going to send the signal to the receiver. The transmitter on the car is going to have a total of four wires that we're going to need to connect. One's going to be power, one's going to be ground, one's going to go to our breakaway switch so it knows if there's a breakaway, and one's going to be connected to the cold side of the brake switch. Our brake monitor is going to rely on the movement of the brake pedal rather than the movement of the actuator. That way we get a true brake reading so even if something were to fall on our brake pedal and move it just a little bit, we'll have an alert on our monitor inside the motorhome letting us know exactly what's going on. Our monitor system is going to work with all braking systems. Just keep in mind you may need a stoplight switch to get that brake signal to the monitor. So if you're looking for an easy way to monitor the activity of your braking on your towed vehicle, our monitor system is going to be an easy way to do that. And the fact that it's portable from motorhome to motorhome is a really nice thing, especially if you tow with different motorhomes. So now that we've seen what our monitor looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. So here's everything our brake monitor is going to come with. It's going to come with the sending unit that's going to mount on the car, the receiver that's going to mount in the motorhome so we can know what's going on. And it's going to come with all the necessary wires and connectors to get it installed. The way you're going to be able to tell the difference between the two monitors is the motorhome one, if we look at the bottom here, it'll have a plug and that's going to be for the power source that we're going to plug in. This will plug into the monitor itself and then we'll plug the other end into a 12 volt power source on the motorhome. Now on the vehicle monitor, you'll notice that the small plug isn't going to have anything in it. Instead, we're going to have this large plug in the center. That's going to plug our harness into. And then on the end of our harness, we're going to have four wires. Our black wire with the ring terminal is going to be our ground wire. Our blue wire is going to hook up to the brake signal from the vehicle. Our red wire is going to be our power source, and then our yellow wire is going to hook to our breakaway on our braking system. Now as far as power goes for the towed vehicle side, we're going to have a few different options. We can use a fuse tap and get power, but keep in mind this is going to have to have constant power so you don't want to use a timed power source when the vehicle's off it'll lose power. Or we can wire directly to the battery using a fuse holder. So we'll grab our stoplight switch, and the sensor here is going to have a large opening. You're going to want that to point towards the firewall, but you also want to make sure that there's no moving parts in its path. It's okay if there's something there, you just don't want to have anything moving like wiring harnesses or the steering shaft to be directly in line with it. 
And we want to mount this as high as we can. That way it's not going to interfere with our feet. We don't want to put it down here. We just want to find a nice spot that it has a clear shot. And once we do, we'll go ahead and clean the brake pedal arm off with some rubbing alcohol and we can stick it directly to it. So we'll remove the backing. And since our steering column is right here, we can actually just come down a little bit. Make sure that our stoplight switch isn't gonna be in the way. So even if we have our feet up, it's forward enough that it's not gonna interfere with anything. We'll stick it directly to the brake pedal arm. Then we can use the included zip ties feed them through and we're going to go around the brake pedal arm and through the other set of holes that are on the stoplight switch and cinch it down and make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. So with our stoplight switch in place we're going to take our harness and there is going to be a plug on top and bottom. For easier routing we're gonna use the plug that's on top. That way we don't have to worry about the wire hanging down. You can kind of feel where it's gonna be, since it's gonna be a little difficult to see it. Plug the harness in, make sure it locks into place, and then we'll start making our connections with our three wires. So our red and black wire are gonna be our power and our ground. Now to make it easier on myself, I'm gonna hook these directly to the battery. So I'm gonna to have to extend the wires out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and strip back a little bit more of the insulation from each wire. And then since it's a, such a thin gauge wire, I'm actually just going to fold it over on itself. Make it a little bit thicker. Then I'm going to take a butt connector and I'll crimp it onto the end of my wire. Then I'm going to extend it out using another piece of red wire. Now you don't have to use red wire, you can use whatever color you want. But for easier identification, I'll be hooking red to red and black to black. And we'll do the same thing for our black wire. So now we're gonna grab our monitor system. Make sure you grab the one for the towed vehicle. It's gonna have the plug on the bottom that's in the center and the larger one, and it's gonna just have a single hole off to the side. We can take our harness, and we'll go ahead and plug it in. Make sure it locks into place, just give it a quick tug. And for now, we're gonna be focusing on the end of our wires and connecting everything. So with our four wires here, our red and black are gonna be our power and ground. So we'll set those aside for now and we'll focus on our blue wire here. We're gonna to wanna to strip back the end of our wire and we'll take a butt connector and we'll crimp it in place. And this one is going to attach to the blue wire that's on our stoplight switch kit. So we're just going to be connecting blue to blue. Our yellow wire is going to hook into our breakaway switch. Now it's important when you hook this wire up is that you find which wire on your breakaway switch only has power when you pull the switch. The easiest way to find that is if you go to your breakaway switch and you test one wire, one wire is going to have power all the time. It, if you have that wire, use the other one. There's only two wires on your breakaway, and you want the one that only has power when the pin is pulled. We're going to strip back our wire, and we're going to connect this wire to our breakaway wire. Now our red wire, we have a decent length, but this isn't going to be long enough to reach out to the engine bay where our battery is. So I'm going to go ahead and strip back the end put a butt connector on and I'm going to extend it out. Now the black wire with the ring terminals is going to be our ground wire. Now we do have the option of grounding it inside somewhere. You can remove this kick panel by the hood release and there should be a few factory grounds back here. However, we're already sending out a power and a ground for our stoplight switch so we might as well send out the ground for our monitor kit. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this ring terminal off. And I'll strip back the end. And I'm gonna extend it just like I did with my other wires. And to make sure everything stays together and I know what wires are what, I'm gonna be using a black wire as well. Now I'm gonna tape my power and my ground wires 
to a piece of airline tube that I had laying around. You can use a coat hanger or whatever you have available. But I actually passed my airline tube through a grommet in the firewall so I can get access outside. For now, we're just gonna set them aside and we'll go ahead and pull the cover off of our battery. And we're gonna have a positive post that we can hook up to and then just to the outside towards the fender, we'll have a factory ground that we can hook up to as well. As you can see, when we extended our wires, they actually went well past where we needed them to, which is okay because we can always trim them back and cut the excess off. So I'm just gonna cut the wire about where the battery is, cut the excess off, and we'll strip back the ends of our wire. We'll grab a butt connector for each one of our wires and crimp it in place. We'll grab our fuse holder for each one and we'll put one end into the butt connector. We'll strip back the other end of our fuse holder wire. And we're going to be attaching a ring terminal to each one of those. Now you want to make sure you use a large ring terminal, that way it'll fit over the stud on the battery. Then we'll come to this nut on our battery post here. And we'll use a 13 millimeter socket and we'll pull it off so we can slide our ring terminals in place. Make sure we route our wire so that the cover can still close. And we'll just go around everything so that our fuse holders will be on the outside. Then we can take our nut and put it back on the positive post of the battery. For our two black wires, I'm gonna go ahead and trim those as well because we have plenty of excess wire. We'll strip back the end and we'll attach two butt connectors to the wires. Then we'll use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the nut off of this ground point right here. So we'll remove the nut, put our two grounds in place, and then we can reinstall the nut. Now we can take a few minutes and clean up any of this excess wires that are just kind of dangling, make it look a little nicer under the hood here. So then we can take our two amp fuse, we can put it in the fuse holder, and both the stoplight switch and the monitor system are both gonna use two amp fuses so you don't have to worry about which wire is for what. So with everything under the hood cleaned up, we'll come back to our stoplight switch kit. And we're using a small screwdriver, you can use a pen or whatever you have that's gonna fit into that hole so we can press the button that's recessed in there. We're gonna push in, the green light will start flashing and when it goes out, that means that it learned its home position. And if we look at our monitor, we can see that the status light is green, which means that it is getting a signal and it's on. Now, if we push on the brake pedal, we see the green light on the stoplight switch come on and the yellow light on the brake monitor come on. So we know it's getting the signal and when we release it, it goes out. All we have left to do now is tie up our wires underneath the dash and put our monitor box somewhere under the dash where we can still see the lights so that we can help diagnose anything later on in the future if we need to. So now we'll grab our motorhome monitor. If we look on the bottom, it's not gonna have the large plug, but in the small hole, it'll have a section where we can plug the power cord into. We'll plug it in, and then we'll find a 12 volt power source to plug the other end into. Once we plug it in, we'll get a green light under status, letting us know that it's communicating with the transmitter that's mounted on the car. If I press the brake pedal on our motorhome, it'll apply the brakes in our towed vehicle, and the yellow light under brake will come on, letting us know that they're applied. When I release the brake, the light will go out, letting us know that the brakes on the car are being released. Now the motorhome monitor is gonna come with some hook and loop fasteners, so we can stick it to our dash in an easy spot to find it. That'll finish up your look at the Roadmaster Universal Brake Monitor Kit, part number RM-9530 on our 2014 Chevrolet Malibu.